Flipping over to the last example, we have a projectile that's propelled into the air and its trajectory can be modeled by this equation. The height is negative 4.9 times the time squared plus 20 times the time plus 2. So, and h is the height in meters, t is the time in seconds. So we're asked two questions. When will the projectile hit the ground? And then what's its maximum height? Now when it hits the ground, we're actually finding what the horizontal intercepts. In this case, we'll call them the t intercepts because t is the variable on the horizontal axis. Now, to find the intercepts, we would actually be setting h to zero because the height would be zero where it hits that horizontal line. So we'll have negative 4.9t squared plus 20t plus 2 is equal to zero again because the height is zero. And for any quadratic equation, actually any equation, I like to start with a positive coefficient. So I'm going to multiply everything by negative 1. So notice all the signs change. So this actually is an equivalent quadratic equation, has the same roots as the original, but just starts with a positive coefficient. Now here comes my quadratic formula. Notice my variable in this equation is t, and so it's not x now, it would be t equals, and then the same quadratic formula. So identify your a, b, and c. a would be 4.9, b would be negative 20, and c is the negative 2 on the end here. And so we substitute in the values. Of course, negative negative 20 is 20, plus or minus the root of negative 20 squared, because that's the b squared, minus 4 times 4.9 times negative 2 over the 2 times 4.9. And so underneath the square root, negative 20 squared is 400. 4 times 4.9 times 2 is 39.2. Again, we have a negative times a negative, so it will be plus 39.2. So adding that to 400, we get the time is 20 plus or minus the root of 439.2 divided by the 9.8. And so we would actually evaluate 20 plus the square root of 439.2 divided by 9.8, and we get negative 0.1 for the, uh, the minus one, actually. When we do plus 20 plus the square root of 439.2 divided by 9.8, that gives us the 4.2 answer. The negative point 0.1 comes to the 20 minus the root of 439.2 over 9.8. So we have two intercepts. And so this is what our projectile motion looks like. One intercept here is at negative point 0.1, which isn't terribly interesting in this, in this example because we can't have a negative time. But we also, the 4.2 is actually what we want for A here. When will the projectile hit the ground? Well, it actually it, it travels from this point to its maximum and then it hits the ground here at 4.2 seconds. So that's when it hits the ground. Now in B, we're asked what's the projectile's maximum height. And now we do need the negative 0.1 for that. Remember, you average the intercepts, the x-intercepts, to find out where the axis of symmetry is. So the axis of symmetry looks like this. So in B, we would actually average. We take the negative 0.1 and the 4.2 and add them and divide by 2. And so that time actually works out to 2.05 seconds. So that's 2.05 seconds there. And so I would fill in 2.05 seconds to place the time here. And so there's my calculation. And that works out to about 22.4 meters. So that's the maximum height. It occurs at 2.05 seconds, and the highest that projectile gets is 22.4 meters. And that's the end of the lesson.